guys, welcome to Cafe IO. This is Akash Verma, and we are going to be talking about DigitalOcean Cloud. The idea for this series is going to do a comprehensive walkthrough of cloud computing. This is extremely beginner friendly and mostly hands on. I will be using DigitalOcean Cloud. The key takeaway of this video series is going to be twofold. One, we will be exploring DigitalOcean Cloud in great depth by looking at its offering and services. Second, we will be looking at case studies alongside which can simulate the concept and explain why a certain service is utilized. We will learn how you can create servers, deploy applications, get started with Kubernetes, explore features which DigitalOcean has to offer. Effectively, you will, this should help you become a better developer while working with DigitalOcean in general. Let's get into it without wasting any time. Video. Hello, so this is how DigitalOcean website looks. We are going to be talking about products where you can find all sorts of regular infrastructure as a service offerings like compute, databases, storage, networking. We'll be looking at solutions wherein you can build custom solutions using these modules, using these products that DigitalOcean provides to probably deploy a big data service or be able to host your own WordPress setup. We're going to be looking, taking a look at marketplace and what is the marketplace offering it has. Uh, DigitalOcean has quite an interesting marketplace where there's a lot of ready to use products which you can just deploy within your machines or infrastructure. Then there's a lot of community support which it has where you have a lot of documentation which enables all sorts of deployment, all sorts of guides for any of their products. And then finally, we'll be looking at pricing and how they uh, fit in the ecosystem, how are they priced, etc. We will also be looking at comparison with other cloud providers. So we will start with the product offerings. DigitalOcean has quite an extensive list and standard set of infrastructure as services. It has compute, databases, developer tools, storage, and networking which is very standard across cloud providers and you most of the times need one or multiple of these services to build an application. We'll get into depth. For compute, it has droplets, which is the traditional virtual machine or EC2 instances as more popularly known. Then there's Kubernetes, which enables scale and container-based deployment. It's a container orchestration engine. We'll have a session dedicated to it. There's an app platform, which is more like a pass where you can take your co and deploy without having to worry about infrastructure in a big way. There are databases available, which is this Redis, this Postgres and MySQL for relational databases, this MongoDB for a NoSQL kind of a use case. It offers all sorts of developer tools, which starts from API, command line interfaces to monitoring interfaces, which enables you to interact with your infrastructure in a more uh, developer friendly way and uh, even be able to control a lot of operations from programmatically, right? Then there's all kinds of networking options available, which is to say that you can set up your own private network, you can have firewalls, you can have load balancers, IP, etc. It has traditional storage option like disk storage, volume based storage and object storage. And that is pretty much what concludes Digital Ocean product catalog. Now this, as you by now have understood, is an infrastructure as a service. They are not into providing a lot of platform as a services, though that is beginning with the start of app platform. However, they do not provide ready to use APIs for consumptions like a lot of other cloud providers do, which enable a functionality. Digital Ocean is an infrastructure provider predominantly as of now. Let's move on to the kind of solutions we can build using DigitalOcean. Given the fact that it enables all kinds of infrastructure, any or more specifically all generic computing needs can be easily addressed, be it web hosting where you want to easily host a website. You can do web and mobile applications which can run your front end or back end API logic along with all sorts of scalability needs. You can design a highly available streaming video service. You can use it for big data computing where you can run batch and streaming big data workloads. There's all kinds of SaaS development which where you can enable your B2C use cases and customers to just come interact with your application while DigitalOcean can be your behind the scene infrastructure provider. So 
it it can enable a lot of use cases and predominant use cases that exist in the industry and effectively they make cloud computing simple and extremely cost efficient moving on marketplace is a one stop shop which has an extremely diverse catalog of one click applications what i mean by one click application is if you scroll down you can take a droplet which is a traditional machine and you can select an installation for instance it could be a wordpress or a django server or a go or any kind of web server be it nginx a lot of options are available in the form of blogging tools c panels etc it has all the tools in one place and what you can do is you can just select it as a template and it's going to pre install it it will save a lot of time and effort which usually goes into research and configuration of these kind of setups so it's a great place to get quickly started and if you want to see some of the options available like developer options available we'll just scroll through the developer tools available and if you see there's a lot of developer tools right there's this doku caprover this plesk appsmith there's r studio in case you want to do data science development app right for kubernetes okito there's tons of options available and all of these are just ready to use deployment in any kind of a droplet scenario provided you allocate the necessary size for it now digital ocean has a great community you can even go and write and submit your own application and you can write for donations too now the way they have designed their whole community is there's an overview which can provide you a basic well documented stuff there are standard tutorial and then you can get answers and answered you can get your questions answered by a lot of con community driven by a community driven interactions which is extremely helpful and most of the articles are extremely exhaustive so that is digital ocean in a nutshell we will now start with pricing now the way digital ocean is structured is you can start as low as $5 really it's it's extremely cheap so it's it has a it has a very transparent pricing structure you can go to the pricing tab and you can understand how you want to what sort of use case you want and how it will tell you probably how it's going to bill you so there's all sorts of option available for basic general purpose cpu optimized memory optimized and storage optimized needs as is prevalent a style across cloud providers now you can probably select a basic tier which should be usually uh, good for most of the kinds of workload you can select a regular intel with ssd and this is what i was trying to tell that it starts at five dollar a month where you get a very small machine but it is usually good enough for basic workloads like running a simple wordpress or holding a static website then there's kubernetes which is effectively running on top of droplet infrastructure the key thing to understand is the control plane is free however there's a charge for having a high availability for the control plane if you want to have a control plane uh, which allows high availability and uh, more control to the user you can charge a 40 dollar month which can help you do all sorts of customization Databases are priced similarly. You can select the type of databases, for example, Postgre, and you can select the type of optimization you want. It's usually a general purpose or a storage optimized DB, and then you can just deploy the database on top of it. Object storage is are available. Again, it's an extremely cheap uh, offering. You can easily find object storage stuff wherever you want to have any kind of needs of storing objects like videos, images, etc. Then you have all sorts of volume based storages which are usually attached to droplets when you create a new droplet again volumes are just disks then you have load balancers and container registry uh, if i'm not wrong container registry is free actually so in case you want to use a private container registry which is extremely cheap you can just utilize the digital ocean for it it's extremely handy so it's extremely transparently priced and uh, relatively cheap there's not a lot of extensive service list that gets created and uh, we'll talk about how it compares with different cloud providers in the next video so i'll just do a quick recap and final summary for the first video in the series 
We looked at DigitalOcean Cloud where we touched upon the products it has to offer in forms of infrastructure as a service, this compute, database storage, networking and developer tools. You can use them to design a wide variety of solutions. Some of these solutions which are like ready-made, pre-built are available as one-click app which you can just install on a simple machine. And the pricing is extremely transparent and you can just go and check based on whatever your needs are in the pricing tab. And uh, that's pretty much it for the first video. Thank you guys. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.